Now moving on to objective assessment, we always start with mental status examination. So we always want to simply look at the client, right? So we're gonna be looking at everything. So for example, their posture, their body movement, their facial affect, or basically how they look, as well as how they're dressing with hygiene and even grooming. And always note that inappropriate appearance or even poor hygiene may indicate depression or even manic disorder or even dementia or brain disease or other behavioral disorders. Now in terms of behavior, is the client calm and collected? Are they making eye contact? And are they really answering questions appropriately? So always pay attention if the client is answering questions appropriately, for example, to situation and content. So just simply ask, is this client acting or answering appropriately? If they are, then they're alert and oriented times three or times four. So they're answering questions correctly, like their name, their date of birth, where they're at, or even the current president. Now for orientation, this is to person and place as well as time. Now in terms of attention span, this is the ability to concentrate. So what is Serial 7s? So Serial 7s is a way that you can test your patient's ability. It's included in the mini mental status exam mm -hmm. and also the MSC or the mental status exam. Okay. So serial sevens is where you would ask the client starting from the number 30, mm -hmm. count backwards by seven. So 30, then 23, then 16, nine, two. Okay. So part of that, the ability to calculate as well as pay attention to that task. They don't say 23, Oh wait, when's lunch gonna get here? Oh, and okay. start to get distracted, which can be a sign of ADHD, flight of ideas, also can be a sign of dementia. Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube, plus 500 visual study guides that follow along every video, and a massive quiz bank to test your knowledge. All neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. And so another one that we do for our mental status exam is we check their recent memory. So we would do what's called the three or you could even do the four word recall test. And you wanna pick unrelated words so that way they don't easily uh, relate the words to each other. Mm -hmm. So for example, can you repeat these three words? Dog, train, blue. Dog, train, blue. Wonderful, do you have any issues with understanding those words? No. So then you would go further along in the mental status exam. You will come back to that though. So he said those words, now I'm going to do something else, ask him about something else, and then ask him a period of time later, like five or 10 minutes later, mm -hmm. and then you could even try 30 minutes later. Can you tell me those three words again? Yeah. Duck, train, blue. Very good. So the wonderful thing about this is we can use this objectively. We could test him again, a year from now, five years from now, oh my gosh. and see if over time does he slowly lose that ability to recall oh. and lose that short-term memory because that's what happens in patients with dementia is they lose short-term memory. Because one thing that happens as an early sign of dementia is confabulation. 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 It's a fancy word for making stuff up. Okay. So I always think like the con in the beginning of it. A con artist makes things up. Okay. So confabulation is a fancy word for making things up. Mm. So we have to use three word recall or four word recall, whichever one you prefer, that you feel the longer ones needed. Uh, because if you were to say, what do you have for breakfast today? He might be able to tell me something and I can't verify that. Oh, okay. And it might not be what he actually had and not that he's purposefully lying, but think about if someone says, what did you do last weekend? And you think, oh wait, oh, what man. did I do last yeah. weekend? <laughs> Okay, you know what? What day is it today? <laughs> right, and you try to work yourself through that. In patients with dementia, sometimes they'll say, last weekend I was on vacation. Oh. And that may or may not be true. Okay. And it's part of sort of a coping mechanism that their brain does mentally. Mm -hmm. So you want something that we can verify that we know is true, mm -hmm. and it's an objective way that we can also measure if five years from now, the patient can only remember two of the three words, or really struggles after that five, 10, or 30 minute mark. Because as you guys know, dementia, you can simply remember, this is damage to the brain. So clients are losing touch with reality and it's really hard for them to really process things. Now another key term that relates to dementia is judgment. So this determines whether the client's actions or decisions regarding the discussion during the interview are realistic. 
So we're really just assessing the thought process and perceptions here. So remember, clients with dementia have damage to the brain, and so they're not gonna respond appropriately.